Romans chapter 4, listen to this. This is, this is probably one of the greatest and most favorite passages of the Bible um, when it comes to faith. Romans chapter 4, verse 13. It says, for the promise that he, that is Abraham, would be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. And I was sharing this with our staff today. I said, listen to the, did you hear what you just read? You know, some of us are believing for promises that are pretty significant, obviously. Um, they're big, they're big ones, right? Some of us have been believing God for years for something to take place, and uh, we're still believing Him. But notice what Abraham's promise was. This is, this is the greatest of all promises, the biggest promise I could ever imagine, that he would be heir of the world. That was God's promise to Abraham. Now, your promise from God is just not that big, I'm telling you right now. But Abraham believed God that God would somehow, in some way, shape, or form, however, it, he didn't know. You don't have to figure out how God's going to do it. You just got to believe that he's going to do it, right? Amen. That's what faith is all about. His promise was huge. And so it's like, wow, that just hit me. It hit me. Abraham, I, I am making you, in other words, you are going to inherit the world. And we see that it is through his seed. Now, he didn't understand it all. He didn't understand how it would all work out. For the promise that he would be heir of the world was not to Abraham or his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. Somebody say amen. That's how all promises are fulfilled. There's no variation. There are no shortcuts. It's through the righteousness of faith or staying in right standing with God through faith in him and his ability and what his word is and what it has promised to you. Somebody say amen. amen. For if those who are of the law are heirs, faith is made void and the promise made of no effect because the law brings wrath. For where there, and we've covered that already, for where there is no law, there is no transgression. So there is, a, there is a reason for the law. It is to help us understand what our sin is so that we can repent. Therefore, it is of faith. Everybody say, it is of faith. That is the promise of being heir of the world, or any promise for that matter, that it might be according to grace. Somebody say grace. So in, in, fulfill, in God fulfilling his promises to you, whatever they are, however big they are, however small they are, it is by faith, your faith. Everybody say your faith. Look at your neighbor and say your faith. Now, I know it's the faith of God in you, but it is your faith. You have to possess it. You have to activate it. You have to live it out with action. Somebody say Amen. But it's all God's grace. God is just asking us to believe him. That's it, whatever it is. I remember years ago, I used to have young mothers or want-to-be mothers who wanted to be mothers, right? And they were coming to the first church, that I, and they've, they've come to me throughout uh, the ministry that God's given me and asked me to pray that they wanted to get pregnant. They couldn't get pregnant for whatever reason. And so I'd say, okay, do you believe that you can get pregnant? No matter what the doctor said, no matter what's happening in your body, yes, I believe. Now let's pray. And so, you know, every single time, it was like the next thing you know, they're pregnant and having a baby. Hallelujah. Not instantly, you know, but still very powerful. I prayed for a woman here for years and years. She'd come forward crying, weeping, felt so bad. And I'm like, 
just pray for me, Pastor Ray. I want to have children so bad. And then pop, 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 pop. I mean, she had four or five. I don't even know. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Watch what you believe in God for. <laughs> Therefore, it is of faith that it might be according to grace so that the promise might be sure to all the seed. That's us. That's us. The promise may be sure to all the seed. Not on, Listen, this is where you got to understand that this nation does not belong to the devil. It doesn't belong to the Democrat or the Republican Party. It belongs to you. I'm about to speak in tongues right now because you are heir of the world. You claim property. You want a house? Claim a house. Somebody say amen. You deserve. Listen, Jesus had, has made this possible. He knows how to give lots of land. That's why yeah, I read today. I got to keep my finger on that. I, I, read, I read a little something, a meme or something. I don't even know. It was, it was in LinkedIn. And I think it was one of my friends out in California, out, out in California Alessandro. I think you know him, Dad. Uh, he, he said, if there was somebody he quoted, if your, if your dreams do not make you laugh, your dreams are too small. I'm like, oh, how many times have I laughed? I look at these 14 acres. I look at all of this. I'm like, God, this is really funny. This is really funny. You asked me to buy this. I bought it. Lord, you know I'm not a fundraiser. You know I have no idea what I'm doing here, but I'm just occupying the land. I feel like Abraham. Hallelujah. He dwelt in a land that didn't even feel like it. Well, this feels like my own. But, you know, we got all these, all these tenants back here that we're looking forward to displacing gently and nicely one day. Hallelujah. The prom, that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all by faith, and it's the same faith, as it is written, I love this, I have made you a father of many nations. That was the promise. That's how God would make him heir of the world. In the presence of him who he, whom he believed, God, who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. Come on, sometimes you got to do that. Who contrary to hope, this is Abraham now, who contrary to hope, and he's going to explain it, in hope believed, so that he became the father of many nations. This is profound. According to what was spoken. Somebody say amen to that one too. So shall your descendants be, quote unquote, and being not weak in faith. Somebody say amen. See, this is where we stumble. This is where we just kind of, you know, get punched and we go down and we sometimes don't get up again. And being not weak in faith when it comes to certain promises, he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about 100 years old. <laughs> and the deadness of Sarah's womb. Remember when Sarah laughed? Remember when Sarah laughed at the promise? I've been preaching on that, uh, just touching on it lately. It's just such an amazing thing. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith. How? Giving glory to God and being fully convinced that what God had promised, he was able to perform. And therefore, it was accounted to him for what? Righteousness, not the law, not the doing of the law, but faith. Now, a faith in God and faith in his promise. Now, it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but also for us. Everybody say for us. That it, sh it shall be imputed to us who believe in him, that is God who raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who also 
who was delivered up because of our offenses and was raised because of our justification. Father, thank you for your word. It is amazing. And thank you for fresh revelation, God, that you have just shined on me, helping me understand more clearly the, the, the incredible things that our faith in your promises written and your promises given by the rhema word of God through the Spirit. Lord, thank you that, that those things are not too big for us, no matter what they are, and that we can see them come to pass. Thank you for this passage and for what we're going to learn tonight. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, and everyone said amen. So my title and the subject tonight is God is willing and able to do what he promised. That's the bottom line. God is willing and able. We always, we always hear, well, God's willing or God is able. That's, that's the one. God is able. God is able. But some of us don't think that he's willing. Well, if you have that doubt, then the devil tripped you up. So just get that doubt right out of your mind. Say, get out, devil. You're not welcome here. Amen. God is willing and able to do what he promised. So let's look at the story of Abraham. This is an amazing story. So Abraham is just having a good old time in Ur of the Chaldees, you know. He's married to Sarah. You know, he's doing pretty good. Uh, whatever the case, I guess, you know, it doesn't give us all that history, but, you know, I would imagine so. But God chose Abraham. God spoke to Abraham, very similar to us, about our journey, about our life. And, and he, uh, God called him to, a journey, to journey to a land called Ur of the Chaldees. And, and God just said, to a land where I'm going to show you. That's all God said. Now, some of us would say, I don't think so. That must have been the devil because I feel really good about where I am right now. But Abraham knew it was God, and this is part of faith. This is how faith works. So Abraham and his wife, with his nephew, set off. He had to convince his wife. This is what faith does. When you have a promise and, and you believe God's going to bring it to pass, other people are a part of that promise and a part of your life, and, and they are to be convinced as well. So there they went. And his faith in God was instantly being tested. Obviously, the journey was incredibly long and very uncomfortable, I'm sure. And, and so he finally came to the land of Canaan. You can read it in the Bible. And, and God began to speak to him there. And so here's, what, here's the test of faith, and here's what it boils down to. God is willing and able to do what he promised, but are you willing to believe and obey for his promises to manifest in your life. And what I mean by that is, let's say you're being tested. Let's say there's things in your life that are really challenging your faith. And, and so you need to get the promise of God that relates to that issue, whatever it is. It can be financial. It can be healing. It can be relational. It can, it can be business, ministry. I don't know. Whatever the challenge is, and you get the promise, and you, you take that promise, and you look up. I cannot tell you how many times I've looked up to God and said, Lord, this is your word. I am believing this promise right here, and I thank you that you're going to bring it to pass. Now, it doesn't happen all the time instantly. That's what faith is all about. But I, I believe you, and I'm going to keep a good attitude. I'm going to wait. I'm going to believe you, God, and I'm going to honor you in my life while I'm believing you. So he was a citizen of Ur now, Ur of the Chaldees. Now Abraham's a citizen of Canaan, Canaan land. This was the land that God was promising to give him and his uh, people that would come from him, the Jewish people. And so, but let me ask you a question. What if Abraham never left Ur of the Chaldees? 
he would have never experienced the blessings of what faith brings. He would have canceled everything because he didn't take the journey. He didn't step out in faith. Faith and obedience to God position you for the promise of God being fulfilled. I was in a really nice position at Montgomery. They were setting me up to take over for the pastor who basically uh, resigned uh, about a year, uh, six months after we started here. God sent me out. I didn't know he was going to resign. Uh, God sent me out, and we planted this. And, you know, I was thinking, well, you know, Lord, did I miss it? Talked to my wife, uh, you know, as we were planting this church. And Kim looked at me. She said, no, uh, Life Church has always been plan A in your life. And I said, amen, hallelujah. That's all I needed to hear. Praise God for a good wife that just encourages you all the time. It's amazing. And so, but Abraham, if he had never gone, he would have never experienced all that he did, all of the interventions of God, all the miracles of God, all the blessings of God. We would not know about Abraham. And so while he was in the land of promise, Abraham received the promise of being heir of the world. And and the and the promise was to his seed but he didn't even have a he didn't even have a child yet and sarah's already old so you can imagine the contradictions going off in his mind now as you enter this fast this time of fasting and prayer let regina be a lesson to us all that you when you fast and when you pray i mean by the way we have our our uh, web page loaded with all the information you need about fasting, preparation, what's going to happen here, everything that you need, instruction, all of it. You can do some other research, but uh, get on there, read it, prepare for the new year, and believe God for great things. Believe Him for things as you're fasting and praying. Choose your fast. Get with God. Say, God, I'm believing. I'm dedicating this fast to boom, 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 these promises and these things that I'm asking for. And so Abraham, you know, imagine if he had not believed God and left and, and taken hold of the promises of God. And so the same thing with you. As you're believing God for big things, great things, whatever, little things, small things, you're just asking maybe for a job. Pray and fast. Somebody say amen and believe God. But he was to be heir of the world. Not only was he just fighting the contradiction, I don't, I don't have, uh, I'm old, Lord. I know, I know it doesn't, you don't see all of that, but I'm old already. My wife is old. He was fighting off not only those things in his brain and in his thoughts, but he was fighting off bandits that were, you know, just taken off with his, with his nephew. And, and, and he watched the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. I mean, these things, they are, you know, we, we think we're going through tough times. That is, you know, what he went through. And so he fought off doubt about the promise, just like any of us would, went through unfavorable times, lived in a tent. You know, his, his, his servants squabbled, his hire, the people that he had hired. It's just, it's just all kinds of things. And so, but you have to take all of that and, and take your stand with God, keep a good attitude, keep the promises before you, and don't let exterior things uh, hinder what God is producing on the inside of you. Somebody say amen. So listen to the amazing promise again uh, and, and Abraham's testimony. And as it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. This was before he was ever a father at all in the presence of him who believed, uh, whom he believed, God, who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did, who contrary to hope in hope believed so that he became the father of many nations. Are you believing against hope for the promises, some of the promises of God? Are you believing 
uh, beyond the realm of what you see and feel, because what you see and feel is a contradiction to what you're believing. That is the test of faith. Somebody say amen. This will be the test of your faith. And, 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 and when you encounter God, when you hear him, he's going to put things in your heart to believe that are remarkable promises. But listen, let me say it again. God is willing and able to do what he promised, but are you and I willing to believe and obey God for his promises and waiting on his promises to be manifested in our life? Somebody say amen. I say yes. I say yes to that question. Whatever it is, healing, financial, relational, whatever, business, ministry. So here's some points I want to give you tonight. The Bible tells us Abraham took two strategic actions to fortify his faith. See, God just doesn't tell us to believe him for something incredible or things throughout our life that are nearly impossible. Some of you are believing for loved ones to be saved. And it's like, I don't think they're ever going to, don't let that come out of your mouth. No, say under your breath, you're going to be saved. You're going to be, you're going to be saved just while they're eating lunch or breakfast or dinner. You're, you're going to be saved. You're going to serve Jesus. Somebody say, amen. Hallelujah. You would be, you would be amazed at how your spirit man just starts. Woo! The Holy ghost. He fills you up like a balloon. You've seen those balloons that they put on those big tanks, they just, shh, that's how your spirit feels. When you start confessing and saying and praying the things that God wants you to pray and say and think. Somebody say amen. So, two strategic actions uh, that fortified Abraham's faith. Number one, Abraham refused. Abraham refused to allow the natural realm to hinder his unwavering faith in God and his promises. He refused. You know how to refuse things. Our, my little grandbaby Eva, I love little Eva. Oh my goodness, she's the sweetest thing in the world. Well, she has her vocabulary now. It's going on. It's going down. She knows how to communicate. And she knows the word no. And she knows the word yeah. And there's other words that she, but I, I love her no, because she'll say no to about anything. And then she'll change her mind. Yeah, you know. She knows how to refuse things. And you have to know how to say no to things oppression, bad thoughts, contrary thoughts, things that you see around you that are contradicting what God has promised. Somebody say amen. Abraham refused to allow the natural realm to dictate to him or to hinder his faith in God and the promise that he had received, that he would be heir of the world, by the way. That is a huge, like I said, huge. That's unbelievable. So we've not believed that big, but that's part of our promise as well. He refused to allow his own body. You have to speak to your own symptoms sometimes. Come on, come on. You got to speak to things going on in your own body and command them to change or to press through them um, until you break through them. Somebody say amen. But he, he refused to allow his own body to contradict God's promise that he would produce an heir. Just one. Any time now, Lord, hallelujah kind of thing. It says, and being not weak in faith, I don't think he said that, because he wasn't weak in faith. And being not weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead. Now, what was, what was Paul saying? That it just wasn't going to produce uh, an heir physically, uh, naturally. But how many know we serve a supernatural God? Hallelujah. We serve, we serve a God. With God, nothing shall be impossible. Nothing will be impossible with God. And so since he was about 100 years old, my dad's going to be 91. So, so Abraham, Abraham was a, nine more years older than my dad. Come on, we have a testimony right here. 
Praise God. He's going for over 100. Somebody say amen. And beyond that, we don't know. I was reading the other day. I mean, the oldest people in the world. Did you know there have been people that have lived upwards to 140 and 150 in the world? I mean, these are documented cases in our day. So come on, somebody. Here we go. Praise God. All right. So anyway, so he had contradictions in his own body in the natural realm that would more than likely just crush any kind of belief or hope. And then not only did he have his own contradictions, he has a wife and he's, you know, he has a wife named Sarah. And so Sarah, what did he do? Uh, He refused to allow the condition of her body uh, being old the, un, the unnatural things that uh, certainly couldn't happen on a natural, factual basis, but not on a supernatural one, that she could produce a baby in her old age. Her doubts, uh, all the kind of giggles that she might have had um, under her breath when Abraham talked about an heir. And, and so... Uh, Abraham had to work through all of that, too. Not everybody around you is going to have the same level of faith that you have, but you have to encourage yourself when it comes to the promises of God. It says the deadness of Sarah's womb, the deadness of Abraham's body, the deadness of Sarah's womb. That's almost impossible to believe through. But he did. Somebody say amen. But the second thing that he armed himself with to fortify his faith, not only did he refuse things, but he, Abraham, rejoiced in the Lord his God for the great promise that God had given to him. Notice this. It says he did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. Somebody say amen. You are instructed by me and by the Word of God to give glory to God for God's promise to you even though you don't see the manifestation happening and even though you, it's unlikely in the natural that it was, would happen. Why? Because this is how you fortify your faith. Your faith is fortified, it strengthens, it is secure when you are praising God, when you are giving God glory, when you are saying, God, nothing, nothing is impossible with you, hallelujah, and giving Him praise. And being fully convinced, it goes on. Not only was he strengthened in faith, giving glory to God, this is how he lived his life, but he was being fully convinced that what God had promised, he was able to perform. This is a big key. If I'm going to believe God for something, i got to believe that he is able. He is willing and able. Everybody say willing and able. Abraham was convinced. The Bible tells us, and it's very powerful, that he gave glory to God. This is how you fortify your faith. You rejoice. You give God praise. You worship him. You celebrate him. You celebrate his promises. You speak of his glory and of his power. It doesn't matter if if I'm seeing it or not manifesting. And pray to him in faith. God, I believe you for this. I Thank you for this. Sometimes thanking him in advance is a, is a big boost to you. And, and, and it just hastens God's promise to you. And it will be done in due season. The Bible tells us that we are those who are of the faith of Abraham. The same faith, the same grace. It's all working for you. It's not the law. It's not how well you can perform And certainly we should walk in holiness and sanctity. There's no question about that. But that's just kind of the byproducts of the new nature and why we want to please God. What really gets God's attention and the flow of miracles and victories in your life is faith and grace. 
God's grace to do so many good things and your faith that says, yes, I believe you, God, for all the good things. Somebody say amen. See, you and I, as heirs with Christ and heirs of the world, have that same faith that Abraham had through Christ. And see, this is, this is why we need this lesson today. Through Christ, we're able to crush Satan under our feet. We're able to crush his doubts. We're able to crush his invasion. You know, anytime sickness and disease tries to attack you, just no. God, you are watching over me. Now, I know sometimes it, it gets in there and you got to believe him through it, but keep believing. Somebody say amen. We are able to advance the gospel with this faith and this grace of God. No matter where in the world, this gospel is, is being advanced through people who are called to advance them where principalities have been lodged, evil principalities have been lodged, lodged for centuries. And guess what? God removes them, and the power of God is revealed. Isn't this good? It's just so good. Kingdoms are shaken through this great faith and grace in every nation. Your neighbors, your family, people that you love can be saved, set free by this faith and grace in you. And so let me ask you a question as we close. What is the promise that God has given to you? You have to identify it. You know, if you, I was talking to our staff today about goals for 2023, things that we want to see happen for the people that we're leading and how we want uh, things to go, what we're believing God for. What is the promise that God has given to you? Let me say it again. God is willing and able to do what he promised, but are you willing to believe and do whatever he requires for his promise to manifest in your life? And I say yes and amen, because this is what the Bible says about his promises. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20 says this, for all the, say it with me, for all the promises of God in him are yes and in him, amen, to the glory of God the Father through us. Everybody say through us. Who else? Not the PTA. You know, not the government. I guess it's not PTA anymore. I'm, I'm old school. It's through us. The promises work through us. Come on up here, Dave. The promises work through us. We're the only ones. I was talking to you on Sunday about the secret of the redeemed. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Why? Because we're the only ones that can say so. How good he is. How powerful he is. If we're not vocalizing it, then who's going to do it? If we're not imposing the promises of God in our world and bringing his kingdom, who is going to do it? This place uh, didn't just appear out of nowhere. This was a, a, a warehouse. This was Wynn Electric Company. Over there, they built roller coasters. Somebody say amen. You know, this stuff just doesn't appear. you got to step in. When God said, in this place, I said, well, in this place, I'm going to be, Lord. Hallelujah. Do what you want to do. And I'm going to be here because I know you've promised it to me. Hallelujah. So what is the promise God has given to you? Maybe a loved one saved. Maybe a breakthrough in your finances. What seemingly, let me ask you another question. What seemingly hopeless situation are you in or you're seeing around you that needs your unwavering faith? What is it? Step in. Step in. You know, my sister-in-law, Parkinson's disease, she's younger than me. Of course, I always think I'm like 25, you know. Like, no, Randy, you're 60. Wake up. But I feel like I'm 25. Hallelujah. Um, that's, doctors say there's no hope. So who's going to step in? Yes, she has faith. She's believing. 
But we're going to believe with her, right? Amen. God is willing and able to do what he promised, but are we willing to believe and do whatever he requires for the promise to manifest in our life? Yes and amen. Everybody say yes and amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1 says this, Therefore, having these promises, promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. This is, this is how we step in. This is how we step in. We cleanse our heart, cleanse ourselves in the blood of Jesus, take his promise and bring it to bear upon the darkness. Amen. And let it bring light and fire and power. Hallelujah. And then one more question. What bad report have you been given or lie that Satan has said to you, whispered to you, that you need to overcome in this time of fasting and prayer. God is willing. Let me say it again. God is willing and able to do what he promised. But are you willing to believe? I mean, Regina, bless her heart. We're just going over her testimony. We're, we've, we're clipped it. We're editing it so that we could just share it. On our during our fast because it really has a lot to do with fasting and prayer but it's so good I mean the tears the feeling the, the weeping almost the hopelessness and the, the desperation it felt and God was listening and he was capturing every tear he was capturing it all and and she set herself to fast and to pray and give an offering a substantial offering too financial offering it's like, God, do it for Regina. That's what I was, God, do it, do it for her. Hallelujah. Woo, what are we willing to do? What sacrifice? Are you willing to give up some meals? Are you willing to give up some time? Are you willing to bring offerings to God? What is it? I'm telling you, are, you, are the tears going to, you know, is the feeling going to be there? You know, that's what preparation leading up to the time of fasting and prayer is all about. Hebrews 6, 12 says, do not be over, do not become sluggish, but imitate those who through what? Faith and patience inherit the promises. Woo! Bring those lights down, Curtis. So, you're able to access the supernatural realm of God, the sacred realm of His promises. You can walk into the very throne room of grace and thank Him. Lord, thank You for this precious promise that You have given to me, for my loved one, for my health, for my church, for this community, for my nation. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. Walking into the throne room. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, the sacred realm of the promises of God. People don't access it enough. They don't believe it's true, even Christians. But you believe it. You know it's true. You've seen the supernatural power of God. It's not easy, but it is real. You've been declared righteous by God. You've received his faith in his nature. You are heirs of the world. So what are these other things that we're believing for in light of that big one? Stand with me right now. God is making you the change agent. You are the keys to every prison door that is around you. For others, for your life, you carry his glory. You carry his promise. So trust him. Shine with his glory, with his praise. Like Abraham, you know, refuse to allow the doubts to come and rejoice. And, and bring the, the gladness into the throne room with you as you believe 
for God's promises to be fulfilled. Make this declaration with me. And just say it after me. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that I have the faith of God on the inside of me. Thank you that all your promises to me are yes and amen. I am not bound by my old sin nature, but I am free. Thank you that I am accepted by you, approved by you, and loved by you. Thank you that I am clothed in your righteousness, and I am blessed. Thank you that I have access to a supernatural and sacred realm of your promises, your peace, and your power. I give you praise like Abraham. I rejoice. I honor you and bring glory to you. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Come on, give God praise right now. My chains of gold have been set.